What went wrong with Nike Golf? August 2016, Nike announced that they were no longer making golf clubs, balls or bags after almost 20 years. But what really went wrong and why did Nike fail to succeed? Okay, let's rewind time. Let's go back to when Nike got into golf. It started in 1996. They signed Tiger Woods for 40 million for a five year deal. In 1997, Tiger wins the Masters by a record 12 shots, wearing Nike hat, top and pants, but actually no Nike gear just yet. In 1998, Nike make their first golf ball. And in 2000, Tiger switches to the Nike ball and wins the next four majors, the famous Tiger Slam. 2002, Nike make their first clubs. They made some forged irons, forged wedges, and a titanium driver. And then we're gonna jump a few years. We're gonna jump over to 2007 because Nike brought out a square driver, the Sumo driver, if you remember that. It sounded like a big tin can. In 2008, in the Masters that year, they got first, second, and third place with Immelman, Woods, and Stuart Sink. Incredible year. And in 2013, Rory McIlroy signed a $200 million contract. And then 2016. The start of 2016, Nike Golf signed Tony Finau and Brooks Kepka, and that was full bag, all the clubs. And in 2016, later on in the very same year, in the August, they decided to announce that they were no longer making clubs, bags, and balls. So before we dive a little bit deeper into what Nike did right, but more importantly, what they did wrong, I thought I'd take a little walk down memory lane and play golf with a full set of Nike clubs, including a Nike golf ball. Now these were supplied to me by my good friends at Golfbidder. Golfbidder is a fantastic company that sells second-hand golf clubs. They have thousands upon thousands of high-quality second-hand clubs for you to buy. And also, they trade in your old clubs. Definitely worth checking out. I've done some great videos with Golfbidder in the past. If you've enjoyed those videos, make sure you smash like. If you want to know more information about Golfbidder, hit the link in the description below. So after playing golf with the Nike clubs again, I have a little walk down memory lane. I can't say, the, the gear is decent. I thought the clubs performed really nicely. And it's similar to what I said in my reviews when I tested a lot of these products a few years ago. The products always performed nicely. Never the best in the world in my opinion. You know, there was often drivers out there that would maybe perform and hit longer than the Nike ones. But they were never bad products. Now, even when I took him out on the golf course again, I enjoyed hitting the driver. I thought it was a really solid driver. I loved the irons. I thought the irons were really, really solid. And after even a few years old, the club spun like crazy. The wedges I enjoyed as well, that 60 degree lob wedge that I had in the bag. Anything with Tiger stamped onto it just gives you an air of confidence. That wedge was class. Now again, going back to reviews in the past, I've never been a massive fan of the Nike putter. And that is the same again. After playing golf with it, it just doesn't quite feel as soft or as responsive as some of the other brands. And the last point, the golf ball. Certainly the most recent one that I've tested, the resin. It was just very clicky, quite hard. And it was a shame because the golf ball, sometimes they made them well and sometimes they weren't quite as good. So on reflection, the Nike gear performed nicely still. And they did, again, when I reviewed them all those years ago. In my opinion, no better than TaylorMade or Callaway or Ping or Titleist, but never terrible, always really solid performance. So, what did Nike do well? 
I made a few little notes. First off, Nike signed some massive names. Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Brooks Koepka, Tommy Fleetwood, Michelle Wee, Susan Peterson, Tony Finau, David Duvall, Molinari, the list goes on. They had an unbelievable stable of fantastic athletes. And their players, and this is an incredible start, won 16 major tournaments. That's unbelievable. And possibly even hundreds of tournaments around the world if you added, added everyone up. The other big thing that Nike did well is their advertising was amazing. Their commercials was groundbreaking. Nobody did it in golf like Nike did it at all. They had, you know, Tiger and Rory doing adverts together, even like football stars like Wayne Rooney and Rory McIlroy collaborating on commercials and ads. Their social media and adverts were fantastic. And very much Nike aimed their target audience as young golfers. They tried to make golf cool, which is good because it attracted a new wave of golfers. There's no question about that. And in 2013, when Nike had signed Rory, they finally brought out a driver that kind of caught everyone's attention. The covert driver was fantastic and really performed well and started to match the performance of other brands out there. And all in all, Nike were on the rise. They were doing all the right things or making all the right movements, making golf a little bit different. So what went wrong with Nike Golf? So I've made a few points on what I believe Nike Golf did wrong. And these are all my opinions. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Leave a comment to why potentially you didn't use Nike clubs. Or if you did, what you enjoyed about them. I think the first point, and this is a really important one. Nike, and it's not their fault, were massive in other sports. They still are the biggest sports brand in the world. And I bet most people watching this video have owned a pair of Nike trainers in the past. They're just huge in other sports. Now, the problem with that, I think when they started to make golf equipment, there was an air of uh, hesitation, was like, well, what the Nike know about making golf clubs? They're not a tight list who have been in the game for donkey's years. These are Nike, they make trainers and sports gear. What they're doing making golf clubs. And I always think that was a big barrier that Nike really had to get over. I think they started to make the right progress, but it was always gonna be a massive obstacle. I think the next point then was they signed these massive superstars. Now you might think, well, that can only be a positive and it can be definitely. The problem with it is if those superstars weren't playing well, it was often perceived that it was the golf equipment that was hampering their performance. I remember when Rory signed for Nike, 2013, and you know, he could have picked any brand in the world. I'm sure any brand with $200 million, he would have probably signed for. And at that point, when he first started playing with Nike clubs, he was playing badly, he was playing really bad golf. And it was so quick and easy for people to jump on the back of the fact he's now using Nike clubs. That's the only thing that's now different. So the Nike clubs got blamed for Rory's bad performance when he first signed with them. They obviously improved that later on down the line. I think another big thing as well, and there's a few samples on the desk here, the colour. The colour of the Nike golf clubs definitely was not to most people's likings. It doesn't matter to some degree how good the performance of a driver is. Because if you're quite a conservative man or woman who actually wants just to be quite subtle and use a plain looking driver head, you would probably prefer that over something that's bright blue or bright vault or green, lime, yellow, whatever color it was. And I don't think that matters to even age. I think that can be and it, age or ability. Because I know really, really good golfers who definitely have the, the prowess, let's say, to pull out a blue driver on the first tee, but they'd still be a little bit hesitant. They'd want to just pull out a traditional looking black or gray tightless driver as opposed to something quite as as lavish. And Nike, I think we're trying to tune it in with their youthful spirit, their fact that they have these colorways in other areas of sport. So when they brought out these drivers, they also brought out trainers in the same colors and they were trying to keep it all uniform. But I never quite worked in golf and that was a real shame. I think another thing as well, these products I've got on the desk now were the more recent products just before they kind of fell out of making golf clubs and balls, etc. But the very first products that Nike Golf came and brought out weren't great. 
you know, the early adopters, the Nike die-hard fan who shot straight to the store to buy Nike golf clubs when they first came out and they were so excited to tee it up, yet the performance lacked. The performance definitely was inferior at that stage when Nike first started making clubs. So again, you've got to really build on that and that took just an awful long time. I think another thing that Nike potentially didn't learn from other manufacturers, and if I'm honest, only other manufacturers have learned more recently, is the franchise of it all. I can't tell you how many times Nike changed the name of their premium golf ball. I mean, I, I, I would give anybody um, a bet if they could name every single premium golf ball that Nike brought out. Now, think of that in tight list. Everyone just knows they brought out the Pro V1. Pro V1 and Pro V1X, that was it. And they've stuck with that franchise for a long time. And only brands like TaylorMade are just starting to figure that out when they started bringing out the TP5 and keeping that franchise. Nike never had that. It was different names, it was different colors, it was different this, different that. And you never felt like you were connected to that product. And if it changed, well, it was very easy just to move on to a, a new brand, which was a real shame. And I think another thing that Nike, in hindsight, did wrong. They tried to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. If you think about it, Nike made everything. Drivers, three woods, hybrids, driving irons, irons, not only blades, forgiving irons as well, big chunky ones. I always remember the slingshot irons were some of my favorite irons ever. But then they also got into wedges, started making putters, obviously golf balls, bags, clothing, caps, shoes. They were doing it all. And that is a big ask. That really is. To try and master every single area of a company, that's really hard. Even again, I'll use Tyler as an example. If they want wedges made, well, they've got Vokey making the wedges. If they want putters made, they've got Scotty Cameron. If they want clothing made, they go to Footjoy. Nike weren't doing that. They were keeping it all in brand. And I think that was a really hard thing to try and master. I think overall in hindsight it's very easy to see three years down the line but there's a few points to what nike potentially did wrong and was that then the demise is that what really ended up them turning off the switch to making club ball and bag so in my opinion that's what i believe nike did right but also what they eventually end up doing wrong and we may never know why nike ended up pulling out of golf club ball and bag because it happened so quickly. August 2016, it just went, boom, we're not making it anymore. And that was definitely a snap decision. Because I've got a few sneaky images of the club they were planning to bring out at the start of 2017. And they look great. I was excited to see what Nike were actually gonna do next because they were just they were just getting there with the product. It was close. It was just about to maybe take it to the next level. And boom, they're out of it. So what does this mean for golf? What does it mean for you guys as golfers? I think we, I don't know if we should be concerned or not concerned, but the biggest sports brand in the world could not succeed by making golf clubs. Was that because they couldn't maybe sell enough clubs to young golfers potentially? Was it the fact that actually there's probably too much competition out there? You think of all the brands now that are making golf clubs, were Nike just like, you know what, we've got so many other things going on. We don't need to be making all these golf clubs, potentially. They're the biggest sports brand, they're huge. Or should we be concerned? Should we be concerned that other brands might go down the same line and end up not making golf clubs anymore? Or, on the flip side of that, will we ever see Nike Golf return making golf clubs again? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. So again, thanks to my good friends at Golf Video who supplied me the clubs to take this wonderful walk down memory lane. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe.